everyone now has an iPhone. This documentary shows a free, indefinite and totally eco-friendly way of charging your smartphone without the need of a charger or electrical power source. A new scientific experiment provided by Professor Physifilm. You've probably already seen videos of experiments on the internet showing the manifestation of static electricity. A good example of this is a plastic rod attracting various small objects when rubbed with a piece of cloth. Knowing that you have to be careful not to believe everything you find on the internet, we decided to do this experiment again in a specialized laboratory to allow it to be confirmed by researchers from the scientific community. Let's first take a natural plastic rod identical to the one used in the previous video. Then let's use a woolen hat with an animal fur pumpum. Let's rub our plastic rod against the spherical stuffed fur. Here's an electrostatic pendulum. When we move the previously rubbed rod towards this ball, made of soft plastic, it's seen to move. Let's take some antistatic astronaut gloves and delicately break up a piece of fireproof polystyrene similar to the one used in the video viewed on the internet. we can see that the rod attracts the pieces of plastic again. Let's put some ordinary pieces of green plant cellulose fibers on the experiment table. We can see that these ordinary pieces of paper are also attracted to the rod. Finally, let's use a Fresnel fluid with high ethanic ability and with dynamically strong static properties. The few bubbles that rise reflect the fluid's exothermic character and its tropical anthropogenic coefficient. If we pour it into a synthetic crystal container, we see that the green liquid is transferred to the glass. Let's set down this precious liquid and take the same plastic rod again. When the liquid flows from the container parallel to the field of gravity, electrostatically magnetized rod, it seems to defy gravity in moving towards the electrostatically magnetized rod. All the electrostatic experiments we've seen on the internet have been replicated in the laboratory. Under these conditions, this video can therefore be formally confirmed and approved by the Physifilm Laboratory's scientific committee which is have seen that a plastic rod can be electrostatically charged and attracts objects to it. We might then wonder about the physical phenomenon behind this electrical charging of the rod. In other words, where does static electricity come from? Let's try and answer this question by this time by placing the electrostatically charged rod in front of a magnetocylindrical pointer type blood pressure monitor. When the rod is rubbed and brought near the blood pressure monitor, its pointer moves perpendicularly to the tangential bisector aligned with the rod's axis. As shown in this computer-generated video, particles of electricity are seen to undergo a quantum transfer from the wool cloth to the plastic rod. The excess particles will fall to the ground. This transfer of particles of electricity gives rise to what is commonly known as static electricity. Using a precision electron microscope, let's observe the particles of electricity contained in the rod. As we can see in this sequence in large one million times, these particles of electricity consist of moving molecules comprising multi-layered cylindrical parabolic gluons that have the amazing property of oscillating in a direction initiated by the electric current's polarity. We've just seen that the wooden hat is able to transfer electrical particles to the plastic rod. The question is whether some fabrics are able to give up even more particles of electricity and thus increase the plastic rod's electrostatic charging power. 
Let's take our pointer type Paris seismic emitter again and use a range of everyday fabrics such as paper tissue to rub our rod again. As we can see, the meter's pointer does not deflect. Now let's use a real rabbit skin. We see that the analog cyclothemic power meter pointer deflects sharply when the plastic rod is rubbed against this rabbit skin. It can be seen that the skin of the small animal is then able to restore a greater quantity of electricity molecules to the rod. Another computer-generated image video provides an understanding of the transfer of the atoms of electricity from the rabbit skin to the rod. Why is it then that rabbit skin, unlike wood, is able to give up so much electricity? The causes are probably to be sought in what the small animal eats, which is mainly carrot, the staple food of long-eared lagomorphs. As everyone knows, carrot essentially consists of carotene, which has the atomic symbol Ca, located in the periodic table of the metalloid's column, where the best electrical conductors are listed. The carotene atomic element is seen to gravitate 27 charged electrons to its peripheral layer, which explains its high affinity with electricity molecules. Let's cut a carrot into thin slices to try to understand the inner workings of this intriguing vegetable. For this purpose, we'll use a reversible four-quadrant hyposynchronous chopper. In doing this, the disturbing similarity of carrot slices with the gluonic cylindrical parabolic electricity molecules observed previously becomes apparent. Let's take a slice of carrot and view it under an electron microscope with a huge atomic magnification. The atoms of carotene that moves linearly in the carrot's inert structure can be clearly seen. When these carotene atoms are ingested by the rabbit, they end up in its stomach and are synthesized into molecules of electricity which migrate from the inside to the outside of the animal and then to its fur. Another computer-generated image video provides a good illustration of the physical theories mentioned above. This explains why a large quantity of static electricity is generated when the animal's skin is rubbed against a plastic rod. Only the rabbit's stomach can convert the carotene atoms into electricity. No static electricity is generated if we rub a carrot against the plastic rod. Likewise, if we rub the skin of a barrett, obtained from genetically engineering a cross between a banana and a carrot, we also see that nothing happens. For the record, there are also a few varieties of musical carrots that have absolutely nothing to do with the subject we're dealing with. We might then wonder whether this large number of molecules of electricity provided by the rabbit's skin could power electronic devices through the synchronous migration of the induced electrical charges. Let's do the experiment again by moving the rod near a light bulb, which is designed to make light, and rub the rod again. When the rod is moved near the light bulb, it's seen to flicker briefly during the time taken by the migration of the electrostatically charged molecules. Now let's rub the same light bulb directly against the rabbit skin. The surprising result is that the light bulb is lit throughout the rubbing time. If the static electricity stored in a rabbit's skin is able to light a lamp, could such stored particles of electricity be capable of charging a mobile phone? Let's thus take a real, latest generation iPhone. Let's take it out of its packaging and have a look at it because an iPhone is really nice. Let's rub our plastic rod again against our rabbit skin and bring it closer to the smartphone. Under these conditions, we'll see that while the phone's battery percentage increases by a few percent, it's unfortunately not enough to fully charge the device. The same phenomenon can be seen when the iPhone is this time rubbed directly against a rabbit skin. While the device does charge, it has to be rubbed in an asymmetrical horizontal direction. If you stop rubbing, the charging also stops. Let's use our live bunny again by placing it on an experiment table 
and putting our phone on the animal's back. We're amazed to see that the phone is charged continuously up to 100%. It's fantastic! The carotene molecules circulating in the animal's blood vessels alone provide the motion required to transfer the molecules of electricity from the rabbit skin to the phone. Let's now use an ingenious attaching system to keep our iPhone on the back of the live rabbit that has stored enough carotene. The results exceed all our expectations. The small animal can, under these conditions, produce enough electrical fluid to charge our device indefinitely, at no cost, with no need for a charger or electrical power source. A revolutionary, completely free and totally eco-friendly way of powering and using our iPhones for long periods without ever worrying about their remaining battery charge. Our planet is confronted with a growing global demand for its energy resources. Humankind as a whole must therefore find new sources of energy to support its vital needs, such as charging their iPhones without threatening the Earth's fragile balance. We know now that farms of rabbits fed with carotene-rich carrots can provide us with an inexhaustible source of pure, renewable and high-quality electrical energy to charge our phones indefinitely. At the request of a few blind scientists, we're going to read the credits out aloud. This documentary station was written in, filmationed and edited by Professor Fusefilm. The musicalic arrangementation was directed by Basile Ponceau. The voices overing was provided by a friend of mine, whom I know quite well because it's me, Luc Mitterrand. The small slices of carotene were provided by Florence Lagadec. The timestamp is 2019 and the rabbit was perfectly cooked. No iPhone was maltreated during the film's shooting. Similarly, apart from the rabbit and the barret, no animals were harmed during shooting. Finally, I'd like to take the opportunity to sell an electric vacuum cleaner with a particle fister. The technical inspection is okay, it just needs to be emptied and the pressure of the spark plugs to be checked in the wipers. By the way, I, I offer a soda with it. Feel free to contact me should you be interested.